Hi guys! As I have mentioned in my NYX Epic Wear Eyeliner Sticks video, I am back. I am so happy to be back, to be back to my family, to be back together with my cat. And I also hope that the background, the camera and the lights can make you happier watching my videos. Here he is. I have missed him so much that words cannot describe. And he has missed me too. We are happy to be back together, right? Overall, life is great at this point, but I wanted to film this video, which is different from my usual content, about how I traveled during a pandemic. Because this was not easy, this was very, very hard, and I decided that if my video can help one person who maybe also needs to travel during this time, this video was worth making. First of all, after all that I have gone through, I want to say that unless it is really essential, I would definitely not recommend you to travel during these times, so until this pandemic is over. Traveling, especially to another country, is so tricky and you can get stuck anywhere at any point because the rules are changing every day. And if you want to just travel to another country for vacation, I'm afraid you can get more problems than fun from this vacation. So it's of course up to you to decide. I cannot tell you what to do, but just saying what I have been through. As you probably know from a video that I have filmed in April, I went to Portugal in the beginning of March and I live in Russia normally. I went there for vacation and I was planning to go back in the beginning of April. But in the middle of March roughly everything started to be locked down in Europe and in the end of March in Russia. So we got the closed borders, we got the cancelled flights and though I as a Russian citizen and my one-year-old son that I was traveling with could, of course, have the right to enter Russian Federation at any time. We just could not get to the border physically. We could not get there. The story is actually very long. I don't think anyone will watch a video that long, so I will try to omit all the details that I can. So a few crucial moments. The Russian citizens need a visa to be in Portugal and in the European Union. As a compensation of the cancelled flights, you get a voucher, not the money. Mm -mm. There are no flights from Portugal to Russia currently. We were on an island, not in the capital, but on a distant island of Madeira. So at first we were thinking that this thing wouldn't last for too long, that in May um, we would be getting back home. But instead it lasted and lasted and lasted and it still does. And in June, July, I started to looking for all the possible ways to get back home. So I had the difficulty that I was with a one-year-old. Normally, it would be two planes, one from Madeira to Lisbon, to the capital of Portugal, and the other one from Lisbon to Moscow, where we live. But instead, there are no planes from Lisbon to Moscow, so that would leave us with at least three planes. At that point, we also got the difficulty that if we flew from Portugal to another European Union country, we would get visa problems because our visas had expired, they were prolonged by the Portuguese law, but that law is obviously only valid in Portugal. They cannot issue laws for other countries. And after a lot of looking, studying, being in the chats with other people who were trying to return to Russia from Europe, I found that we could actually travel through Belarus, which has a land border with Russia, and we as Russian citizens could, of course, cross it. But traveling to Belarus was also tricky because there were no planes from Portugal. So we had to go through France and then we got these visa issues. So my every day, almost every day, started with calling the embassies, the consulates of all the possible countries uh, that I was planning to travel through. And it was a nightmare. As for repatriating flights, if you're thinking about them, yes, they took place, but not from Portugal. And the confirmation that you're on this flight comes in the last 24 hours and I would not make it with the baby in two planes. So finally what happened is that in August Russia opened the borders with Turkey and Portugal opened the flight corridor with Turkey. So the borders are still closed but those people who have the right to travel like we did could fly there. And so what I did, I took the tickets from Madeira to Lisbon uh, there we stayed with the baby for two days in a hotel and then we traveled from Lisbon to Istanbul and from Istanbul to Moscow connecting flights spending eight hours in the Istanbul airport then in Moscow we got 
tested for COVID negatively upon arrival and we were finally back home. On every point of this journey I was terrified that something would go wrong because every day there was some new rule. One day somebody would tell me that you need a negative COVID test to travel to Lisbon and I'm like oh my god where am I going to get it in the last minute and it costs 160 euros per person so for me and the baby that's 320 euros. I was horrified it turned out we did not need to have it in August because this was an internal flight However, every day something tended to go wrong and it was also very, very difficult to travel this many hours with a baby wearing a mask all the time. I was filming some stories for my Instagram and I want to insert these pieces in this video. They are vertically orientated. I apologize for that, but there was just no possibility to film both vertically and horizontally orientated videos. So I'm just inserting them to give a summary of our journey so that you get the idea how it was. It is my last day on the beach, hopefully. Waiting to check into Lisbon with our millions of bags. Hello Lisbon from me, the baby, and the millions of bags. Enjoying walks in Lisbon where we are for two days. One of the city landmarks. The ancient elevator, so beautiful. If you're thinking that this is the hand luggage that I want to have in the plane, you're wrong. This is the hand luggage that I want to have on the plane. And this is something I absolutely need to have. And I won't be allowed to take this cabin-sized suitcase with me on the plane, so I will have to stuff it all in this bag and just hope that they don't wait and carry it around for 19 hours. And here we go, departing Lisbon. Once again, millions of bags. How I'm going to deal with this, I will have to carry this with myself and it's really heavy. We have passed all the security checks. The baby is actually really sleepy. And this thing is so heavy. Oh my god. We have just officially exited the European Union. Oh my god, we're flying home. I can't believe it. <laughs> yes! The sweetie is laughing. <laughs> I mean, right now we're flying to Istanbul. Then we have an eight hour layover there. And then we'll be going home. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> so happy. at the Istanbul airport, guys, for the next seven and a half hours, we will be here. We are now about to leave Istanbul and fly home to Moscow. We have landed! We're in Moscow! And even the stroller got delivered at the aircraft. Oh my god, I even missed this gloomy weather. Oh, I can't believe it. Guys, we have exited the airport. My makeup looks very worn out. But I'm with my husband. Say hi. Hi. There, now you know how our journey went and I just want to give some advice to people who need to travel during these hard times. First of all, before you book a flight, make sure that these flights actually take place because a lot of times right now the air companies are selling tickets because they need the money but then these flights get cancelled and you get a voucher, you do not get your money. So how you can check it? If that's a flight that is supposed to take place, like every day for example, you go to the airport timetable to the airport of departure and the airport of arrival and you check that this flight is not cancelled, that it has really flown. If it really flies like today and tomorrow, then there is a high probability that if you buy it for next week, it will also fly. Second, double check, triple check, quadruple check all the documents because a lot of countries right now, they require additional documents from travelers. So even if you are allowed to enter the country, you are traveling too. 
you may not be allowed to enter under usual terms. For example, with a tourist visa, you cannot enter a lot of countries now. But even if you're sure that you can, uh, check if they require a negative COVID test, if you need to do it in advance, or if you need to do it upon arrival, how much it costs, etc., etc. Check if you will be quarantined upon arrival. This may significantly alter your plans, obviously. And don't forget to check how you can travel back. Well, in case you need to, of course. If there are any possibilities to do that. And if you have made up your mind, if you have chosen the flight, if you have booked the tickets, don't forget to call the air company and ask them what luggage rules they currently have. Because in a lot of countries, in some air companies, they, for example, limit the hand luggage nowadays and do not allow the normal cabin suitcases to be taken in the cabin. You can transport them in the luggage department for free, but so that you are prepared for that, just call them and ask what the restrictions are on board. This is it guys, I hope my video was helpful, I wish you safe traveling, I wish you a pleasant flight in case you absolutely need to do that, in case you don't, I ask you to think twice because it is so, so problematic nowadays. Thank you for watching guys, see you in my next video, bye bye loves!